video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today I'm going to be painting on fidget toys from Five Below. A little fidget toy haul. Wow. Except I only got like four. <laughs> I probably should have gotten more because I sure could use them. <laughs> I'm always fidgeting. Not with fidget toys though. Just with life in general. Always clicking things. Click, click, click. Rocking back and forth in my chair. Throwing my phone back and forth. Moving my feet too much apparently. And supposedly that's unbearably annoying to some people. <laughs> so today I'm confronting my bad habits by buying some fidget toys. I've of course seen Nerdy Crafter unbox a ton of really cool fidget toys, so I wanted to get some of my own, and I thought it might be fun to customize them. I have painted on fidget toys before, specifically Poppets, and it didn't go so well. But since then, some time has passed. I'm a little wiser than I was yesterday, so this is a take two of sorts. I'm starting off with this banana fidget. This one's a tough one. It's more so for aggressive fidgeters. You have to push really hard. Really muster all the strength you can gather when you push it. There's these little beads that pop out. I feel like normally fidgets are supposed to calm you down, but this one just frustrates me. <laughs> I hate it. Apparently the beads are supposed to be ice cream. It's a banana split popper. See the little ice cream scoops? Cute, cute. I'm trying to acetone the faces off the ice cream scoops, but nothing's really happening. I think they're just like really baked in there or something, but that's okay. It's fine, it's fine. The banana itself is like silicone or something, I think. I won't be painting on that, but the plastic beads inside will be getting a little makeover. I don't usually paint on something so tiny. I'm not the best at it, but these were just perfect for what I have in mind. Perfect. <laughs> I painted over the bead, but the face is still peeking through a bit. I'm just going in with Posca for the details. My idea for these beads is that they'll be three little piglets. Still ice cream themed though. A while back I had made this doodle of a chef pig. He's a cannibal who cooks and eats little piglets. So cute. When I saw this banana fidget, I figured it would be perfect for the three little piglets. I added some whipped cream on top of his head. I also wanted to include a cherry. I thought about sculpting it on, but that might not be feasible with this fidget. So I just painted a cherry on top. After painting the first piglet, I went over it with Mr. Super Clear to seal it in. The next piglet is based off vanilla ice cream, not to be confused with vanilla ice, the wrapper. There's no relation, just a slight resemblance. Because of the color scheme, it looks like it could be a cow, but I assure you, it's still a pig. I put some hot fudge sundae on top of his head along with a tomato, chef's choice. I'm taking time to seal in each pig one at a time. I didn't want to risk them rubbing off during my artistic endeavors. The last one's a chocolate ice cream piglet. Normally it's hard for me to paint on such a tiny scale, but I tried to keep things simple. I didn't add too much detail, so it worked out. I added some strawberry drizzle on top and then cleaned everything up. One last spritz of Mr. Super Clear and it's done. I was really worried the piglets would just scrape off, even after sealing them. I tested it out and it actually works. No casualties. I call that a win. Moving on. I also picked up this lovely unicorn from Five Below. It has a squishy butt. Whoa. Feels like one of those mochi squishies, the silicone ones. Initially, I intended on making a dark side unicorn, but I don't think the paint would stick to the unicorn. It's like a silicone type surface. So instead, I've decided to steal its butt. And to do that, I whipped out my flamingo scissor. Oh wait, what's this? Rainbow unicorn scissors? That's right. I returned the flamingo scissors to my fiance, and now I have my own pair of really cool mini scissors. Moving up in the world. So the unicorn is no longer a sparkle butt. Now it's just a sparkle. This is no longer a sparkle butt. Now it's just trash. The butt's the squishy part, so I figured I could add it to something. I'm adding it to the Sniffledorf keychain that I customized in my last Five Below makeover. Sniffledorf's not the same tiny little kitten that came scratching at my door about a year ago. He's now an adult cat. He's gained a few pounds along the way, and he's got quite the large derriere, if I do say so myself. He's heavy. He's a big boy. Sniffledorf's changed a lot. Speaking of something that's changed... This is Austin. Austin used to have an ugly website, but then one day Austin started using Squarespace. Austin now has a beautiful website. Be like Austin. True story. 
Squarespace is known for their professional looking templates, which is important because, you know, aesthetics matter. They also have built-in security and analytics and 24 seven support. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash graveyard loon to save 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, so I'm adding this hyper-realistic butt to the back of him. Can't say I never do any realism. This is about as realistic as things can get. Looks just like his butt. I'm attaching it with silicone glue. I think any other glue just wouldn't hold when it comes to silicone. As for the unicorn, I'm getting rid of that. The wristlet is kinda cute though, so I'll keep that for myself. Next thing I picked up are these simple dimples, which are very fun to pop. I've made these from scratch before in a DIY pop it video a long time ago, but today I'm just gonna be customizing them. I tried easing one of them out, but I had no luck with that. I don't think I can get it out easily without breaking it. So I pulled out a hammer to try and break out the simple dimple. Maybe I could just break it with my hands. Oh God. My Dremel tool thing? Maybe that'll work better. Yeah. <sighs> Six months later. It's a little damaged, but it'll work fine for my purposes. Instead of painting on the simple dimple, I'm gonna be adding the dimple onto one of my characters that I'm gonna make out of paper. I'm sketching out my character. It's not someone who's made too many appearances. In fact, she only showed up once before, in my squishy speedrun video. She's the politician's <laughs> wife. Bonjour, mademoiselle. She was probably my favorite character from that video, so yeah, she's making another appearance today. For those of you that didn't get the chance to meet her, lucky you. She's basically a blue bear with a giant bow, not to be confused with Boo Boo, who's a blue ogre with a giant bow. <laughs> the politician's wife is the evil mastermind behind her husband, the politician's <laughs> evil political schemes. He's kinda like her puppet, a figurehead to her twisted campaigns. Normally she carries around a giant ninja star to slice political opponents' heads off, but she left that at home today, so she'll just have to use her bare hands. Get it? <laughs> bare hands? Cause she's a bear. My apologies. I cut out the front and back to her and added a little hole stabbed through the center. I do realize that I didn't give her any arms or legs. I wanted to give her little felt limbs. No reason. I guess I thought it would just give me something extra to fidget with once I got tired of the simple dimple after about three seconds. I want the simple dimple to kind of be like her protruding tummy. She's not pregnant. She just ate one of her victims this time around. <laughs> Since the simple dimple is silicone, I'm using silicone glue to attach everything. To really make sure it stays together while drying, I clamped it down for like about an hour or so. She's looking good, other than the fact she has like no arms or anything. I hot glued the rest of her arm. I'm using fabric hot glue. I find that it's a lot stronger than regular hot glue. Ta-da! There you have it. She needed a little cleaning up, a few touch-ups here and there. I think she looks pretty good in a murderously seductive kind of way. And that works too, so that's a plus. Yeah. For the other simple dimple, I'm keeping it pretty simple. I'm gonna be painting over this alien, giving him new life. He's cool, cool enough for the dark side if I'm being honest, but he's pretty generic. I wanted to make him more my style, something more derpy and yet just as evil, of course. I'm starting off by painting over the alien, just getting rid of all that. He's got eyes in the front and the back of his head, so I'm covering those up, slowly blinding him, just taking things one stroke at a time. So he's an alien from the same universe versus the booger alien from Donut Space. They're not the same guy, just the same species. They're both boogers, freshly picked from Donut Space, not from my nose. I tried to give him a worried expression. I don't know his story. I don't know why he's worried. That's just the vibe he gives me. I went over it all with some varnish to seal everything in. And that's that, another booger alien to add to my collection of boogers. Next up, we've got Franklin the Frog, or at least I think it's a frog. I also think it's a turtle because of this dark green flap on top. I'm not sure. He's probably the most fun fidget toy out of the bunch today. He's one of those squeezy things that poop. I don't know how else to describe it. Poop it out, poop it out. I emptied out his insides. I don't need Franklin himself, especially because I'm not even sure what he is. I'm just gonna start from scratch. Goodbye, Franklin. So now we've got this little glittery sack full of little frog eggs. I don't know what they are. They're like gel beads or something. Orbeez. 
That's what they're like. Anyways, I'm gonna make my own little skin for this sack. Starting with some felt. I chose this pretty pale pink color, salmony pink perhaps. To make a costume for this egg sack, I'm cutting out a semicircle kind of shape. Except I already messed up, so I'm gonna try that again. Tomorrow. Second time's a charm. Look at that. My felt character is also gonna have some ears, so I cut those out as well. I also cut out some flappy white wings. It might not be obvious just yet, but I'm making a little pink bat. I'm not sure if this egg sack is gonna fit into it perfectly. I'm hoping it will, but we'll see. I don't know how to sew, and I'm not learning today. So I pulled out my Fabricot glue sticks. I'm gluing on all the appendages first, since I'll be turning this inside out. This way I'm hoping it'll have a more finished look, though probably not. I then went around with hot glue on all the edges and closed everything up. The good thing about fabric hot glue is that there's not much wait time at all. It's just like regular hot glue, and I don't have to wait around, so that's really nice. Immediate results. I like that. Oh, I missed the spot. No big deal. I'm just gonna add a little bit there. I turned it inside out. It's looking very tiny. I wasn't expecting that. I don't know. I like the way it looks though. It's a really cool shape. But looking back, I do wish I would have made it a bit bigger. Mostly because I need to fit that egg sack in there. Regrets. It does kind of fit. Kind of. It's a little protruding belly, and I'm okay with that. But I got rid of the belly for now because, obviously, I'm not done. I'm adding a fur belly to it. I thought some touches of fur would add a little something something to this piece. A little extra detail to spruce it up. Really bring out its dark side. Subscribe. And I added some little tufts of ear hair as well. I thought it was a nice touch. The fur was getting all over the place, so I had to pull out my lint roller. I always have these on hand, mostly because of my hairy cats. Can you just stand still? Can I get your beard? For the details on the bat, I'm going in with fabric paint. I tried to make the eyes, like, pop out a little bit. I globbed on the fabric paint. But a lot of times when I try to do this, it just kind of flattens itself out after, like, a day or two. Once it's fully dry, so we'll see what happens with this one. I never give up. I just keep trying, even when it never works. <laughs> the definition of insanity. I honestly should have just hot glued on some googly eyes, but I thought of that too late. Anyways, don't look at that. After letting her dry for a couple days, I stuffed the egg sack back in there and... It fits perfectly in there. <laughs> it fits in there pretty well. It's not a perfect fit. Like I said, I should have made this outfit a little bigger, but it's okay. We all make mistakes. Please fidget with the subscribe button, would ya? It'll really help out. Thanks.